I noticed on our bulletin this morning, uh, Charles Daly puts these together and uh, he chooses different things for the front cover. This time it says, Less Lessons from COVID-19. Uh, number one, life is short. <laughs> number two, death is sure. Number three, jobs are temporary. Number four, health is wealth. Number five, tomorrow is not promised. And number six, eternity is at hand. And number seven, only God can save. <laughs> Good lessons to learn from COVID-19. You know, COVID-19 and a lot of things that are happening in 2020 uh, can be distractions. And, uh, you know, we complain about these things that are happening this year that uh, are taking our normal routine and turning it upside down and distracting us from the more important things in life. But I, I like this perspective that we can look at some of these things like COVID-19 and actually use them as a source to focus on what is really important. That's really what the Lord's Supper is all about, taking a time during the week to focus on what is really important. This is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you, as of first importance, what I also received. He says this is of first importance. It's the message of the gospel. He's writing to Christians who have already heard this message multiple times. He says you need to hear it again and again and again and again because it is of first importance. We must stand in this message of the gospel. It is the message by which we are saved. And then he tells us what it is. In verse 3, I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. This is what we come to remember every week when we take the Lord's Supper. We remember what Jesus did for us at the cross, his death, burial, and his resurrection, by which we are saved one of my uh, favorite writers is F. Lagarde Smith, and he has a blog, and he's a friend on Facebook. This last week, on Friday, he posted this comment. I won't read the whole thing, but it's a great testimony of how we can take something like COVID and use it as a source of focus, to focus our hearts and our minds on what is really important on Jesus. He writes, out of an abundance of caution in the week before the Smith clan was due to arrive for Thanksgiving, Ruth and I went to get tested for COVID. Both of us had felt just a bit off, especially me. Meanwhile, with growing concerns about a spike in infections, we canceled Thanksgiving altogether. I drove up to our little mountain retreat to do my usual writing. Over the next three days, I began to experience increasing symptoms. So I wasn't altogether surprised when I got a call from the health department with the chilling words, you've tested positive. As with Job, what I feared had come upon me. I had COVID. Thankfully, Ruth's test came back negative with no ensuing onset, and mercifully, I was spared the worst symptoms ravaging others. My greater battle was mental, dealing with the haunting possibility of how quickly and dramatically my condition might change. Was today's relapse only a temporary setback or the beginning of a downward spiral leading to hospitalization or worse? Unlike other illnesses, COVID's deadly potential can play some truly wicked mind games. 
Now that I'm safely at the end of my quarantine, I look back with added cause to celebrate Thanksgiving 2020, but with some somber reflections. As time progressed, I began to notice a diminishing interest in anything trivial. With apologies all around, I must confess, confess that normal events in the lives of others felt remote and, frankly, unimportant. It was as if I was in an airplane at 33,000 feet, looking down on cities and towns, bustling with life, but nothing to do with me. I was somewhere else, in a separate world, on a different plane, a higher one. He continues later in his post, given human hopes and dreams and plans and schemes, it's hard to think there's ever a life that isn't, in the end, an unfinished life. The cruelty of death from longer debilitating diseases may be a blessing, allowing time to tie up at least some of the loose ends. But at the final hour, all that matters is on an otherworldly plane where there'll be no such thing as an unfinished life at least for those who have taken seriously the one who alone could utter the words, it is finished. To say the blindingly obvious and unfinished life on earth awaits us all, in which case COVID might be a small price to pay for that caution. The caution that says in view of life's brevity and uncertainty, most of what we deem so terribly important from moment to moment is, in truth, terribly trivial. As we partake of the Lord's Supper this morning, let's remember what's really important. Let's remember the gospel. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He was buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day. That is our hope for eternal life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to the table and we remember Jesus. We remember what's really important, the message of the gospel, what he did at the cross and his resurrection to new life. And God, we are so thankful that because of this message of good news, we have the hope of eternal life. We have the hope of forgiveness and salvation. And no matter what comes at us in this life, we have reason to rejoice. Thank you, God, for what we have in Christ. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.